Hello everyone, I'm Havoc and this is Factorio Space Exploration Plus. We are in space, uh, surprise surprise, because we need to work on some things. I did finally get a little bit of the Holmanite up here. We've got 1.8 thousand up here in storage and we can start making use out of that. But before we can really make use, we need to revamp our science setups. So I'm looking at the processes for making the energy science right down here. So we need significant data, we need energy catalogs, energy insights, and lots of cold thermofluid. Now we already have a lot of this stuff in the raw ingredients side. So like each one of these takes a blank data card. I'm already making blank data cards. I just need to ramp that up so that I can use it in more than one area. And then the catalog, so you get an insight from the catalog, and the catalog requires one of each of these. This just takes a little bit of uranium, that's easy enough. Multispectral mirrors, I don't think are that challenging either. We have not made ion stream yet, so we'll have to figure out how to do that. And then this is just copper, holmium plates, and green circuits. But before we start getting into all of that, you'll notice every single one of them takes some cold thermofluid, except for the radiation data. And we're not making cold thermofluid, we're making cool. We take the thermofluid and cool it down to negative 10 degrees Celsius. In order to make the cold, we have to use these little hypercoolers. And this recipe right here will give you cold thermofluid and normal temperature thermofluid again. So we're going to have to change our setup over here a little bit. And what I want to do here is go ahead and stop the process of making our machine learning data cards. Because um, we're going to move this all around. We're going to ramp it up a lot. What I want to do is also look at our fluid setup we are we've got stuff kind of everywhere <laughs> and it might be a good idea to move that around a little bit so we are almost done polishing the rough data substrates here when that's finished we'll move this as well but what I want to look at is making more of the thermal radiators and I have already made some copper coils in preparation of this so we're gonna say request everything that you need I won't have all of these items the copper coil at least I don't think I have any other than what's in my inventory but I made a whole bunch of them because we're going to need quite a lot more processing of our thermo fluid And we're probably going to need to ramp up the amount of thermal fluid we keep on hand. This makes more than enough in its own. We just need to make more of it and then cool it better. So let's see. That's finished. We can take all of these things up. Oh yes, scrap. Scrap is going to be a problem. I really need to set up a recycling facility as well to deal with all of this. But we'll look into that momentarily. We can move all of these out of the way. So we've got some going underground here, weird stuff. All right. How many did we get? Just one, huh? What am I missing? Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I didn't put all the coils into there. So, I need to place down more of our manufactories and build more of our machines that are required in space. So that has a large output. We're going to need to produce the cool 
right? Cool thermofluid and store it in a tank as well. And I don't think I don't think we need to produce it constantly. Just when we get below a certain threshold, probably we'll cool it down more because it does you lose one every time which will mean that this will have to kick on and make more of the just thermo fluid every so often and I had a thermal a couple of them right here okay I want to get as many as I can because I want this setup to change a little bit I really need to pump this into something so let's Break that for a second and place down. Do I not have any? Here they are. Having trouble finding the graphic that I'm looking for. I'm going to just place it over here out of the way for right now. And then we're going to pump into that. Using one of these lovely little pumps right there. And a little bit of power. We're going to have to start using substations to power our items that are outside the range of the uh, the uh, initial pylon substation that they give us. I'm having trouble speaking today. All right. I want it to take every bit of that out of here. And then it can run and process the last bit of what it had. Good. That means I can pick this up and move it. Which is exactly what I want to do. So we are going to figure out how do I want this to run? How do I want this to look? And I'm thinking probably come straight up from here and then start all of the cooling. And each one of these can just be set in a row. They only have one recipe, right? Just the one recipe. And that's to take the regular thermo fluid and cool it down. And if we need to make more of these, we absolutely can. They're not hard to do. I'm trying to figure out how we can sneak some power into here. That's going to look okay and hook up to this. And that's going to be moved as well, so we don't have to worry about it looking a little bit janky at the moment. And if I put that one there and move that over, now everything's powered and it doesn't look awful. It can look better, but it doesn't look awful. So these are going to need to be pressurized by putting a pump right there and that'll take everything out that can be taken out and fully fill this up and that'll keep these primed as far as they can go. Now as far as I know there's not really a use for the thermo fluid at its base temperature. Let's see here. Thermo Thermo fluid. I want to see the uses for this. All right. Yeah. So there's only the only use for regular thermo fluid is to cool it down into other thermo fluid variants, and then certain recipes that we do will return us the different temperature variants of thermo fluid. So what I want to do here is move this tank probably in line with right up here. We are going to make sure it is pressurized as well by using a lovely pump 
and just hook that up and it will drain this one into here. All right, these are both the same. Negative 10, negative 10. And it should be draining this. It just seems to be taking quite a long time. Okay, so what we have is the thermo fluid being made. As long as there's not at least 5,000 sitting in here, it'll continue to make more. It is immediately pumped out and pressurizing the thermofluid intake sides of our radiators. They can be sped up to process much faster. And they each time they lose the one, because 50 normal thermofluid becomes 49 cool thermofluid, that it then goes to the other side which I have only taking out when the cold or the cool thermofluid drops below 5k. So these will all back up here shortly and stop functioning and then we'll have a backup of the normal temperature thermofluid. And we need these. Uh, we also need the multi-spectral mirrors. Let's see. Might be better, I was going to say, to make that on novice but we don't have chemical gel on novice we'll have to bring these ingredients up here and make that in space and that's okay we can do that but what i'm looking at now specifically is making the cold thermo fluid and that one we're going to need our hyper coolers for which i've already crafted a few Hey, we have more. Oh boy. My inventory's full. Inventory management problems. Always a thing. Let's put those items away. Stop. Stop bringing stuff. <laughs> okay, hold on. I can do that easy. Just tell them force them to empty it and then we can throw the items back inside that we want them to get rid of. Perfect. So we're going to need some platform pieces. Let's run down here. Some scaffolding. We're going to need to expand Now the hypercoolers, let's see, place one down. I want to make cold thermofluid. Not super cold, cold. This one takes 10 cool thermofluid and gives you five cold and five regular. So you're gonna, it's trading out, it's like an air conditioned system. You get back heat and cold and you have to deal with those so we're going to take the cold out and store it and then take the the normal uh, temperature and pipe that all the way back around and into our storage here so let's see how we can do that in a efficient manner so I'm thinking so this is the cold this is the input of the cool. Can I maybe utilize? Mm, no, because that's going to put that the opposite side. I'm trying to think of a good way to do this. So we're probably going to need to separate them a little bit. Let's put the first one down directly in line here and figure out what we're going to do. So this is an input. That is the normal temperature thermofluid coming out and I need that to come back around and into the system. So if we place another one of these down 
it's going to need to be a little bit away from this because what we're going to do is probably underground from this point. And then we can take out here the cold thermo fluid. Then we'll just underground pass through. So actually, let's see, I can do this in a little different way. That way I can underground again from the next machine. We want the same thing. We want the normal temperature thermo fluid to come out there and then we are going to pass underground the normal fluid out to here and then we will use a pump back here to force it to go back into the system. Now that will take all of the normal temperature thermo fluid out for us. And then we're going to need to start pumping this out to here until we get a certain amount of it in storage. <laughs> and so on and so on. Also, there is a coronal mass ejection heading for novice orbit, so we are going to have to set up a umbrella up here and some power to handle that at some point in time. Okay, now we just need to power this. Do production modules work in here? No. What a shame. I didn't even think to try that. Mm. I want the power lines to look decent. There we go. Instead of being at odd angles and whatnot. Um, oh, but we made it. We made it a boo boo. Hold on. I need to have a pump that controls this. We're going to lose a little bit because I'm just going to pick it up and move it. It'll be okay. I won't cry about it. Okay. And now we can choose when to have that on. So it's not just cooling 100% of the fluid. We want it to be on when cold thermo fluid is less than... 5,000. That way we maintain 5,000 of each of these. But that is pumping back into here, so that returns some of the thermo fluid each time it runs a cycle. And there's no loss in this. The, only, the loss is in the temperature because you get some of it comes back from cool and goes back to being normal temperature thermo fluid while the other becomes the cold. These are some really nice graphics. They did a really good job with uh, most of the... I say most. Of them. I haven't seen anything yet that I don't like, so I'll say all of the graphics are just really nice with space exploration. But now we're getting the... What is this? Cold? Yes, the cold thermofluid, which is what I needed for a lot of these. Cold thermofluid. Next thing we need to look at is our blank data cards. We need a lot of blank data cards for each of these different items. So we need to come up with a better way of producing the blank data cards. They are made right over here. I have just one machine making them. But I can make them out of more and I need to come up with a better system. I don't know if I want robots moving all of these things because we're going to be using a lot of them. 
I may use some space belt up here to transport those. We'll see. So you need the polished data substrate, which I'm producing right over here. I can just have that put out on a belt and run the polished data substrate I don't believe is used for anything else. Polished. Why did that not bring it up? Data substrate. Here we go. What is this used in? It's only used in making the blank data cards. So what we could do is we can set up a system that takes in the rough data substrate, polishes it, and then puts it on belt so that it can be turned into blank data cards. What were we using these for? Machine learning data. It takes the blank data cards and some green circuits and makes that. Okay, okay, so I don't need the machine learning data for any of these. I need the blank data card, the step beforehand for each of these different items and the different fluid. Okay. <laughs> we also need to do something with these junk data cards. What can we do with those? Let's see. Junk data cards. Data formatting has a chance to give you back blank data cards and a chance to give you broken data cards. Uses cold thermofluid. We've got that. That's not a problem. So we just need to set this process up to reprocess some of those. And then we can just scrap the broken data cards in a recycling facility for scrap. And scrap can be used in a recycling facility to make the different kinds of resources. So can a recycling facility be placed on the planet? Because I might want to do that rather than up here. I don't know just yet. Okay. Let's go ahead and take all of these items out. And we're going to move this. We're, we're rearranging everything up here, but we have lots of rocket science. So it's not a big deal to temporarily break this production chain. We're not even doing any research right now. So let's change those two. And actually, let's just change all of them and hope that I have room somewhere. We're probably going to have to put down another storage warehouse because I think we're starting to get full. <laughs> Look at the robots go. It's beautiful. Okay. That will allow me to relocate this whole setup. Whoops. Didn't mean to pick that up just yet. Let's place those items down here for the robots. Okay. So we're going to figure out exactly what this takes in order to produce the data cards. You need six copper plates, three advanced circuits, and four polished data substrate. And that makes one blank data card. Mm. Okay. 
maybe I will utilize the bots. I'm thinking I want to do belts, but at the same time, it's going to make a, a lot of belts up here. And I don't know if I'm going to do a belt-based base up here in space. That's all right, though. Let's get this moving. That's the first first step in order to get this. So let's choose a good spot to do it. I think I'm going to go probably down in this direction. Okay, so I think we're going to alter the plans here significantly. And I was not planning on doing a very big build in space but you know what we're gonna go big or we're gonna go home so I'm going to completely overhaul my plans for the space base platform here and what I'm gonna do is start building a lot more of this platform itself the scaffolding so we can expand out and then come up with a reliable delivery system of resources to space and set things up and we're going to do a belt based base up here as well so that I can simply belt what I want where I want it and we're going to probably end up using dedicated landing pads I know that you can use uh, the signals and set up all kinds of stuff but I haven't looked up how to do that and to be honest with you I am keen on the idea of just delivering nothing but iron to a landing pad and nothing but copper and incredibly overkilling the process. And I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> because I can. Why not? There's never been a better excuse. But that's going to be it for today's episode. We're going to need to do some preparations for such things behind the scenes before I bring you guys back in next time. If you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to hit that like button. And if you would like to see more content like this regularly, consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you all next time.